Rub up your engines! Here's a 2020 Lincoln Navigator that was just purchased. And what does the woman think about who bought it? Well, she doesn't think anything yet because she hasn't even seen it. Her brother knows about cars. He went all over town and ended up buying this at a BMW dealer. Somebody traded it in for a BMW. Now, it's only got 20,000 miles, but that's totally believable. People trade luxury cars in all the time. But he did have to pay quite a bit for it. He had to pay 67 grand. But with that small amount of mileage, this thing is the luxury edition. It was over $91,000 new. So, I mean, right off the bat, with that little bit of mileage, if you want to get one of these, follow his lead. <laughs> At least get one that's a couple years old. If you're going to save almost $30,000, why not? <laughs> you can see it's a rainy day, but it slowed down a little. So first we'll look at the outside. And of course, yeah. You know, it's a beautiful SUV. This is a loaded job. It's got the old little step that opens and closes. Lots of leg room. And as we look at the third row seats, they're real third row seats. The people don't feel like they're cramped in. They can look out the windows when they're sitting there. There's a lot of space in these. And of course, you got your air conditioning on the top, a phenomenal stereo system. Really nice leather seats. You opens with a kick of your leg. Now, of course, the trunk is tiny when the seats are back for the three row seats. But, you know, when you flip these things down, you get a lot more room. And like everything, they're electric. Here they go. They're flipping down. <laughs> you don't even have to pull on the things. You know? Of course, that one would go down further if you pulled the seat up. But all kinds of space once you empty it down if you want to carry things with this. So we'll put them back up here. Second row isn't power. Those you have to pull up yourself. <laughs> okay, I got a gripe here. The second rows go down with power, but not up. What's wrong here? Why didn't they make it go the whole way? Hey, you're paying 90 something grand new. <laughs> At least make them go by themselves. Come on now. The old ones are tremendous gas hogs. Yet, he got 22.3 miles a gallon driving here in this big monstrosity because under the hood is the V6 EcoBoost and it's hooked up to that 10 speed automatic transmission that has three overdrives in it. So for a gigantic vehicle like this, that's really good gas mileage. Now, from my experience so far, I bet this one shifts pretty good because it's a 2020. Now, some of the early 10 speeds, they were always hunting for gears. People didn't like them. They weren't happy with them. But we'll see when we road test it, see how it shifts. But from my experience of previous ones, the 2020s didn't have the lag problems that the earlier ones did. So we'll go inside and take a look and hook our computer up. Now, while we're letting this thing hook up here, it's really nice set up. A nice big screen. All kinds of space. And I like this. It's got two armrests, so you don't have to hog it. You get one, and the passenger gets one. And check it out. Look at the back seat. The back seat controls. You got all your own controls back there, too. It's Charlie, it's a luxury vehicle. There's no arguing that. But really, for 90 some thousand dollars, you better get some of this stuff. <laughs> As I said, it doesn't have much. You know, it's got 20,508 miles on it. But we're going to check out with a computer here. Now, her brother who bought the thing, he didn't pay for it. He just went and picked it up. He's got a blue driver. He watches my videos. He did a pretty good inspection of it. So I'm sure it's not a lemon at all. But we're going to go really deep with this to see if anything's a little bit wacky. Because if you remember, I had a guy who bought a very expensive Toyota Sequoia and it turns out that it had been wrecked because the mirror didn't work and I could see the door was a slightly different color and he didn't know that. I figured that out. So let's see what's going to happen here. All right, it reads the VIN number. It knows everything. Navigator, Eco Boost, gas turbocharged, direct injection, 3.5 liter. It's got everything. So we shall do a full analysis of it. We'll do a full scan and here we go. Realize it does have this gigantic sunroof i mean look how far back it goes it's truly panoramic you, know? you want to go hunting comets at night <laughs> see a meteor shower well hey stay in air-conditioned comfort look out the roof everybody can see it except for the people in the third row they're not going to get a very good view they'll have to go outside to look and when it's done 
46 systems, 46 systems. Now, there's three tiny faults, and they'll probably be squirrely things. Let's see what they are. We have occupant classification mode, a crazy communication code with C controller module. Yeah, I see this all the time with all those crazy, insane codes. Everything's so computerized. There's so many modules. So we'll just erase that. Of course, we'll check it when we're all done after we road test it. Body control module. It's got a fault, too. Gene's doing a bunch of tests by itself now. That's the thing about Fords. There's a lot of, it even beeped the horn. <laughs> There's a lot of automatic testing that this thing could do. And here's the code. Crazy communication code. Extra enhanced exterior lighting system code. Well, we'll erase that one, too. There's one more image processing module A. Like I said, there's all kinds of modules on this thing. We'll see what that code is. It's doing a bunch of tests, turning things on and off. I wonder if it'll honk the horn this time. It says, Vision System Camera has a code. We're driving and parking. It's got a little bit of code. Well, we'll do what we did with the other ones. We'll erase it and see if any of them come back after we road test. Now we'll start it up. <laughs> So we can get some data on the machine for live data. But while we're waiting for that, not only does it have heated and ventilated seats, but it also has a driver's massaging seat. There's the heated seat. There's the air conditioning seat. Same thing on the passenger side. I can feel my butt getting cold. Drive modes. Here we have normal, normal 4x4. Four four. This is a four-wheel drive vehicle. Slippery if it starts sliding outside. Deep conditions, deep snow. You can turn the automatic stop start off. You can turn your parking assist off. An immense amount of technology in this $91,000 car when it was new. But still, with the technology, I gotta say it's laid out pretty well. Look, heated seats, there's your temperature to go up or down for there. Your menu bar's there. So you can play around up here. Gives you all the additional climate controls. Simple, so you can just touch them and make them go. You get tired of it, turn it off. And for those of you like me, who collect everything, kind of like a rat's nest, right? Big old glove box. You can put a bunch of crap in the glove box if you want. You don't see it when it's hidden like that. But now we're going to look at live data. As you can see, there's an awful lot of it. This is just the computer data here. Calibration data, illegal operation code counter, idle time, all kinds of stuff. And that's just the computer system. Now we'll go into live data for the whole vehicle. There's going to be an awful lot of data flying out at us. This is, after all, an EcoBoost V6 twin turbo gasoline direct inject engine with a 10 speed electronically controlled transmission. There's a lot of computer hardware and software in this baby. A lot of data here. And I do mean a lot of data. We'll start at the top and just to show you how much there is. La, 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 la. We're still in the A's. La, la, la. We're still in the A's. We're still in the A's. We're in the B's now. La, 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 la. And yes, now we're in the D's. Look at that. Look at the information that this thing will throw out to a mechanic. And that's why you can't let any clown work on one of these things. It just keeps going and going and going. Finally, there it is. All of it. And to do a quick review backwards, we'll go super fast. Look at all that info. Whee! That's some obvious things. The equivalent ratio bank one. One is perfect. It's almost there. It's perfect. Now it's a little bit off. 1.99. Pretty close. And the other side, bank two is the same thing. One is perfect. 101. So it's running pretty well perfect. These modern cars, you actually get the fuel pressure on the machine. You don't have to hook up a gauge. Information on the grill shutter. These have grills in the front of the car that will open for more efficiency, close to warm them up more. I mean, these are extremely complex systems and anybody who works on them has got to be able to get this data if they break. Hot wastegate A, servo compensation strategy. Power is reduced to run overheating. No, because it's not overheating. Tests are done for the injectors. No fault in any of them. All the way down to six. Information on the variable timing on the intake and the exhaust camshaft. The fuel pressure is almost perfect. The low side fuel pressure desired is 486 and that's 490, 480. That's really close. You know? I could spend a few months explaining all this stuff, but I'm just showing you. It's phenomenally interesting, all the technology that's in these things. Which is one reason I tell people, if you buy one of these things, make sure you keep full insurance you get in a wreck it's gonna cost a fortune to repair all this computer stuff do not drive one of these unless you have full insurance because it'll just blow your mind what it can cost to repair one of these if it gets in a wreck and the electronic systems start to get crumpled and start shorting each other out but 
Let's take it for a spin and see how it runs. It's all buttons now, so you push for reverse. And you can see, you get all kinds of views. There's the backup camera, but next to it, you got a side camera. You can play with that too. But it's real handy, so you don't run into things. You can see our pole. We're going by the pole. There's the pole. And as you can see, it's got a pretty good heads up. Shows how fast you're going, right in front, mileage of gas that's left, temperature outside, the time. Hey, he's got it in four wheel high, so I don't want four wheel. Switch it back to normal here. Now it's just normal. Get a little bit better gas mileage too. High riding vehicles got a good ride. I mean, it's big, heavy, large vehicles, so they're gonna take the bumps better. I do have to say, we're driving at a slow speed because there's a turtle in front of us. And at this speed, when I cruise a little, I can feel a little kind of hunting for gear in the transmission. I can still feel it in this 10 speed. It is a 2020. I've been in the new ones and they are a bit better than this. Now, if I switched it into a different mode, we'll see what happens. We'll switch it to 4x4 four four and see what happens. Well, now the hunting is gone. It's not doing the hunting. Often when you shift the modes, the hunting will go away. 4x4 four four has got a little bit stiffer to it. Now, since it's raining, let's put it on slippery. See how that does. It's not slipping and it's not hesitating either. Let's see if it really works on a wet, slippery day. Well, there's nobody behind us that I can see yet, so. Here we go. Is it sliding? No, it's not sliding. And it's accelerating quite well. I gotta say, the system works quite well. Now, you can see we're going like 56 now. We'll see what passing is like. It's getting up and going pretty good. And it isn't sliding at all in this rain. And now we've caught up to the turtle that was in front of us, right up there. So I gotta slow down. Now I got no choice. <laughs> but I do have to say I'm impressed. Now this is auto stop start which you can turn off. Now it tells you it's been deactivated. But interestingly enough, when I have it in the slippery driving condition, it didn't shut itself off. So I guess when it's slippery, they don't want to shut it off to keep start and stopping, which of course would be more dangerous. The funny thing, watch. Now we're on a single yellow with dots on the side and then it warned us. It's vibrating the steering wheel, but it didn't do it over a double yellow line. Obviously, the software isn't that great. Hey, a double yellow line is more dangerous than a single yellow line, yet it only did the vibrating and warning with the single, not with the double. Because as you can see here, there's the single one again, and it makes the red light and it makes the steering wheel vibrate. But it didn't work with a double. Hey, that's weird. Slippery four-wheel drive automatic works good. We got a twin turbo here. We step on it in the rain, it's not slipping or sliding, and it's also not really losing the acceleration. It's still really quick. I gotta say, that system's working really well. But now, see, there we go, double yellow line, and it didn't wobble it. It just doesn't work on a double yellow line. Maybe that's something to do with it raining hard, I don't know. I'd just say I would never trust my life to one of those systems. Keep your eye on the road, keep your hands on the wheel. A really luxurious SUV. Now, 91 grand, 60 something's much better, if you ask me. But it doesn't have that many miles on it. You got a lot of bells and whistles at a level of complexity, as you saw with my scan tool, that would blow your socks off. So, <laughs> if you're looking for something this big, one, do like he did. Buy one used and save quite a bit of money. And two, make sure you keep insurance on the thing, because if you get in a wreck, all that electronics, it's going to cost a fortune to fix if the wiring gets bent and backed up. So, you got that kind of money? You get something that can get like 23 miles a gallon on a highway? It's your money! You want to spend that kind of money? Now you know what you're going to get. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell!